In this tutorial, I'm going to show you to use the MailChimp FNAME merge tag to add that merge tag to a URL in a MailChimp email that when someone clicks on it, they will go to a page where you have maybe an opt-in form or a contact form or some kind of input field where that merge tag is automatically input into that input field based on what was in MailChimp. So if you have um, an opt-in for a certain giveaway or a coupon or something, you can have all of their information pre-filled into the form to apply for the opt-in or the coupon or the application process or whatever it is, you can pre-fill all the information for your customers. It makes their life easier, makes them happier, and all it takes is some JavaScript code on your page and some special tweaks inside of MailChimp. I'm going to show you how to do both of those things step by step right now. What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress, you like learning tips and tricks and hacks and having things made easy for you, then this is the place for you. Start now by clicking subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And then, when you've done that, check out the hosting deal I negotiated for you for 50% off. This is with InMotion. Every deal is a discount. Some of them are over 50%. Some of them are just 50, some are under 50, but either way, every plan has a discount. And if you need new hosting for yourself or for your clients or for your dog that wants a new website, check out that hosting deal because it will save you money. And with that out of the way, let's head to the screen capture and start doing some WordPress. I have a little bit of a cold, so my voice is a little raspier than usual. I apologize for that, but we're going to get started anyway because this tutorial needs to be made. So right now, we're on the merge tag cheat sheet for MailChimp. And we're going to use the information we find here to create a special URL inside any MailChimp email that we can use to pre-fill forms on our website. And we're going to use specifically the first name field and the email field. We're going to use these two merge tags and we're going to pre-fill a form that we're going to create. And we're going to use the JavaScript code on this page. So let's do one thing at a time. First, we're going to make the email, then we're going to make the form, then we're going to put the JavaScript on the same page as the form, and then we're going to test it. So let's make the email. I'm going to make a regular campaign email because I don't want to create an automated sequence and wait for that to actually fire. But you can do this in an automated sequence in any sequence inside of MailChimp. Any email where you can add a link, you can do what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to create a campaign, create a regular old email. I'm going to call this prefill form testing. Click on begin. There's four things you have to set up. The to field, which in this case is going to be a list with one email address, which is one of my email addresses. I'm going to personalize the to field with the first name. Save that. It's going to come from me. You'd set these however you need to set them. Subject line is going to be prefill testing. Save that. The content, I'm going to do a basic plain text email. But like I said, you can do this with any email as long as you can add a link to it, and that's pretty much any email. So I'm just going to delete what is in here. I'm going to add a click here to see my form. And this is where the magic starts to happen. So I'm going to create a link. I'm going to link it to a page. I actually had the order wrong earlier. I have to actually create the page first. So I'm going to create a page that the form is going to go on. I'm going to call the page prefill form testing, publish, I'm going to grab the URL, go back to MailChimp, paste it in here. Now we're going to add the merge fields. First thing you have to do to start adding parameters is add a question mark, either after the forward slash or the forward slash isn't there, both work. Uh, they, one or the other might work depending on your site, both might work depending on your site, you have to test it. Then I'm going to add the parameter name. I'm just going to call it F name for first name and then equals. Then I'm going to come out here, grab the first name merge tag, copy it, paste it in here. They always delete the equals. Got to add it back in. Then we add an ampersand for the next parameter. I'm going to call it email equals, copy the email merge tag and paste it in here. And now we're going to have a URL followed by the name and the email of the subscriber. You want to add more parameters, just add an ampersand, give the parameter a name. 
like L name for last name equals, and you can add last name in there. You can add more and more. You can add literally, well, depending on how many characters you have, but you can add lots and lots of parameters. There is a character limit for URL, so you can't go on forever, but you can add a lot of content in there. When that's all done, click on insert, then click on save, then click on save and close. It's going to tell me the content's not unique enough. Click on resolve. This probably won't happen to you. You'll probably be adding this to a customized email. I just have to rename the title to something else. I'm going to call this prefill form test. Save that. Save and close. Now we're all good to go. I'm going to send this email. And while we wait for it to arrive, I'm going to start working on other stuff. Send now. The email is queued. It's going to be sent. Next step we have to do is create our form. You may already have a form that you've created for this. You can use that. I'm going to just create a new one through contact form seven. And I'm going to add an ID for the name and the email. You need this ID for it to work if you're using JavaScript. You can use classes for JavaScript as well, but it's more difficult. If you need to use classes for whatever reason, you have to use the code I'm going to show you in a little bit later in jQuery, a jQuery version of that code. But this tutorial is about JavaScript. I'm going to use an ID in these fields. So I'm just going to delete this field and add it from scratch by clicking on text. I'm going to call it your name. For the ID attribute, I'm going to call this first name. It's going to be my ID. And it adds this little piece of code in for the ID. I'm just going to copy that and add that into the email, short code, and rename it to your email. So it's going to add these two IDs to those form fields. Let's click on Save, and grab our short code of our untitled form, paste it on the page we just created. Update that. Let's take a look at this form once this is published or updated. Here's our beautiful form. Currently, nothing is pre-filled because we don't have A, the JavaScript code on the page, and we don't have any parameters in the URL. To get the JavaScript code, head over to this blog post. There's a link in the description down below and the card above. Scroll down to the very bottom, double click into this code area, select everything, copy it. I'm going to put this right below my form shortcode right on the page. You can also put this into your functions file and there's a way to do it so the code only appears on specific pages. I have linked a tutorial in the card above if you want to do it that way. But for my case, this works just fine. For most cases, this works fine. But if you really want it in your functions file, check out the tutorial I just linked to. Also, it's linked to in the description down below. There are a couple things you have to customize and they're written in all capitals. There's variable, parameter, variable again, input field ID, and variable again. And we have to do this two times because we have two parameters, the first name and the email. So for parameter, I'm just going to put in here F name because I think that's what we used for the parameter. For the variable, this is used internally for the script. So you can name it whatever you like as long as it's a valid variable name, like subscriber first name will do just fine. Then we copy that, we paste it in here, and we paste it in here. And what this piece of code does is it checks if there is a parameter with a value in it. If there are no parameters on the page and you execute just this code, you'll have your form pre-filled with either null or undefined, which you don't want. Because sometimes people will find that page without having any parameters in the URL. So you want to make sure you account for that case. The input field ID are the IDs we just created for the form, which if we want to go back and confirm, first name is one of them. Copy that, paste it into this. So now we have it set up for the first name. Now we're going to duplicate all this stuff. Copy that, paste it right here. I'm going to call this subscriber email. Again, this is an internal variable name that is used internally. The parameter is what's being pulled from the URL, which I believe we set as email. 
and the subscriber email variable we have to put in two different places right here. Oh, sorry. First, we have to duplicate this. Paste that down below. Now, subscriber email, copy that. That will go right there. It's going to go right here as well. And then for the ID, we get the ID from the form, which was your email. Copy that, paste it in here. And now when we update this page with all this code in here, you're going to see that nothing actually appears on the page because JavaScript is not something that prints out by default onto a page unless something went wrong. So let's head out here and refresh this page. And we have a bunch of JavaScript code, but we can't see it, which is how it should be. And now we're going to check to see if the email arrived. Our form is ready for pre-filling if everything went well. Inside my mail account here, I have Bjorn pre-fill testing right here. And this is the link. If I click on this, this will open in a new tab and it should pre-fill the information right into the form if it all went well. And it looks like it all went well. We have F name, Bjorn, email, simple sequence in the URL. Those are pre-filled into the form down below. Now, if this was a different subscriber, say this was Jane and her email was jane at jane.com. Load the page with those URL parameters. It will input them into these fields. And if you take them out, it's just going to show empty fields instead of having undefined or null, which would be the case if we didn't have that if statement in the JavaScript. And that's how we can use MailChimp merge tags to pre-fill information into a form. So I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the hosting deal that's in the description down below, possibly the card up above. And next up, click one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.